Hello. My main goal for you in this particular class is to successfully find and land that first position out of college. Maybe some of you have already got good leads. Maybe you don't have the first clue where to start. Hopefully some of the life experience that I've had will make a difference in your experience as well. So, hand, there is any number of companies out here. Not all the companies are a good fit. And you may think there's no company for you, but there is, right? The skills that you have, there are companies that can put those skills to use and pay well. So the job search process is finding that beautiful match, right? Okay, it's not going to be 100%. There's no relationship that is perfect in this world. But I believe it's possible to find a nice fit and the object of negotiation is to find a win-win for each one of you. As you're going into a job interview, you may you're just ready to answer, right? What do you expect me to accomplish in the first 90 days? What are the company's highest priority goals this year? And how would my role contribute to that? Or what percentage of employees was brought in by current employees? These are interesting questions that can provide um, meaningful insight in your process, in your interview. But let's start at stage one in this process, exploring. You cannot explore too much. I mean, obviously, there's a time limit, but it devote as much time and energy and interest and curiosity, not panic, not obsession, but attack it with an open, interested, curious mind, wanting to learn. Just as we've developed the principles of learning a new culture, you need to have some kind of method, and, and that's what we're going to be talking about here, some kind of method for exploring who you are. Part of that may be perhaps you have seen some of the psychology um, tests, right? Aptitude tests. The, the military ASVAB test is a really good one. If you can find a place to take it, you know, without paying for it, that would be a great option. You don't have to go into the military, but the the feedback that it gives you can show you some really important things about yourself and match you up skill-wise with uh, um, possible places in which you can apply those. I'm definitely not a, opposed to or against going into the military. I've got two brothers who are, who have um, spent part of their career in the military. One brother's um, just got back from Germany a week ago, where he's been for the last three and a half years. So spend the time to explore yourself. Hopefully, you know who you are. You know what you want to do. You know what you're good at, and obviously. College is part of that, right? But you can also f look back into high school and see, you know, what were the things that you developed that you were able to accomplish? And in a sense, I would say no experience should be wasted. Depending on the person, each experience that you've had in your life 
can be captured and distilled as a skill building process. Kind of reminds me of the old story. There's a wise man and a foolish man. The wise man learns from his experiences. The wiser man opens his eyes and his ears and learns from other people's mistakes and experiences. The fool gets stuck in this cycle of not even learning from his experiences and keeps making the same mistakes over and over again. Which kind of man or woman do you want to be? So as you're exploring, also explore the kinds of jobs that you're interested in, the companies that you would like to work for. Where would you, what would your dream job look like? What kind of culture are you interested in? Some people, I have a, a, a great friend, his favorite thing is just be outdoors. He loves the woods. He had, ended up landing a, a rather lucrative position as a forest manager. And he um, helps wealthy people invest in timber. And so he manages their timber investments. In, in this area and across the country, but they're located here in Hattiesburg. I have another friend who is really good with his hands, right? She learned how to, um, she went to watchmaking school and she learned how to repair Rolexes and any kind of analog Me me mechanical watches. She has an extreme focus and drive and determination. She has a very steady hand. She has patience. She doesn't get easily perturbed or distracted, and so she's able to handle this fine uh surgeon level precision, but on a mechanical device. And this segues right into the very next one, which is research. There's, there's so many available resources these days for research. And at the same time, Everybody is trying to sell themselves, right? Storytelling is an art. And you need to learn to tell your story. And you need to learn to be able to listen to other people's story. But remember that there is truth and other in many stories. So having a, a sense of what is true and what is likely is a good sense. I'm not saying to be bitter and cynical, but rather be astute and observant. When people use certain key phrases to describe themselves or their process or their product or their company, Try to learn to decode, to translate that language in their culture and figure out what they're exactly doing. Go to career planning centers. Go to job fairs. Talk to people. Right? Be interested in others. Go to where people are looking for work. Talk to people in the barbershop. Talk to people... Um, wherever you can find them. Talk to people next to you on the plane or on the train or, or however you, uh, whatever kind of transportation you take. 
you can learn so many things and and that form of networking is really important so research learn all you can there's so much information out there that you're going to get bogged down so focus on building a network and i think to me that is bigger and more important than a lot of the other details building a network find out what jobs are open a look at public works look at private works look at professional works look at um you know what are the biggest what are the highest paying jobs usually um that's because they service some some heavy needs of people for example health care they pay you know and um electronics of course these days even the trades electrician plumber hvac you know look into certification of some kind and then start applying but this state this part of stage 3 the applying part is it says develop a resume all right this is where you're going to learn to tell your story all right I recommend using LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a wonderful resource. LinkedIn, um, the book, uh, our book in chapter four has several pointers on how to develop your LinkedIn profile. Your LinkedIn profile should be all of your experience. And learning how to put that into language that will catch the eye of recruiters. Recruiters are processing just as many candidates as you are researching job position openings. All right. If you're looking at 30 jobs a day, 15 jobs a day, you can be sure that a lot of recruiters are doing more. Right, especially for companies like Amazon or Google or Microsoft. And they're going to have to take a, a quick look. They're going to look at the top third of your page, and they're going to see if they can see any highlighted words that, that give them any indication that this is a person that um, they might actually be interested in hiring. So, all your experience, including what wouldn't be maybe applicable to this particular position, is going to go on your LinkedIn profile. The book says, make it findable and visually appealing profile. Use your profile to showcase everything that doesn't fit on your resume. Your resume shouldn't be more than two pages. I'm fixing to show you a resume. But I wanted to start with the LinkedIn profile. Okay. This should be your whole story. This should be the long version. Right. Head forensics coach. Linguistics and language processing. Um, graduate assistant. Secondary school teacher. Founder and owner of a translation. Small translation uh, company. A testing rater for English as a second language for 10 years. Oh, and there's more. Uh, assistant pastor at Santa Fe Baptist Church. A consultant for Benedict Day School in developing their foreign language program. Um, a human resources trainer, ergonomic analyst, and safety coordinator. 
become a undergraduate research assistant at University of Southern Miss, an academic tutor for the athletic department, a project manager and shop supervisor for um, Structural Steel co uh, Company. You can see the education there, of course, Tulane University. Um, I was a project coordinator and shop coordinator. Before that, I was carpenter for ten, eight years. So I worked for myself. I was court translator for the city of Forest, Mississippi. And I was a minister and missionary pastor on the Choctaw Indian Reservation. I was a press operator. I was English as a second language teacher. Um, I was an outreach and marketing director. My education um, was in classical languages and linguistics. And other than that, I am self-taught on many other things. I worked for over a year in the oil field. I have, you know, an ESL certification, teaching English as a second language. The volunteer experience was um, as in theater, as a walking role at the Mississippi Ballet Theater here in Hattiesburg. Um, I was in about 15 different productions. Seven years in a row, I was in uh, the Nutcracker. So, all this all this varied experience comes together in one place on LinkedIn. So it's worth it to spend time and develop your story here. Okay, and also start developing your network. Start connecting with people. Some uh, some people have said that we are five connections away from every person on the planet. In other words, you know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone to every person on the planet. Whether it's the president, the president of China, a friend of yours, Congo, Central Africa. You know someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone who knows someone. Five levels away from every person on the planet. So the power of networking is absolutely extraordinary. Now let's take a look at the resume. This isn't my... This is one example of a resume. There are others that could perhaps work better. I start out, um, in this particular case, I was looking for, uh, working for a, a tech company as a data mining data analyst um, as a second job uh, or as contract work over the summer. And so I give them, of course, telephone, email address, I uh, try to use one that's not associated with any of my other jobs currently, just to be professional. I use my school not to not to combine the conflict between school and home. Um, I use I use my GitHub um, handle for to to showcase my um, coding work that I've done. And of course, my LinkedIn, my full LinkedIn profile is there. A lot of people aren't going to look at it, but if they choose to, right, I'm going to provide essential snapshot of what I can do, right? Languages I can speak and translate, programming languages that I work with, like LaTeX, um, R, Python, MySQL, and Linux. 
key skills, program management, leadership development, strategic planning, problem solving, public speaking, data mining, research, quantitative and qualitative, teaching and curriculum development, and cultural models and analysis. And then, you know, what kind of projects did I work on in each of these positions that would translate to the kind of work that they need to be to get done, right? So you want to look at, at these kind of stories as, and I'm still, I'm still learning to tweak this part, all right? The, the big picture is we have to learn the language. We have to tell the story in a language that the recruiter can understand, okay? And we have to hit the keywords that they are looking for. Um, we'll look at a, a couple of examples here in a minute. So your, your picture of yourself should be chronological. It should be functional, skill-based, as I showed. Um, I noticed um, a couple of people wrote a cover letter. And they addressed it, Dear Hiring Manager. All right, that's where research comes in. Find a name, right? Find, find out, and uh, most companies are going to try to screen and funnel you into these particular avenues. Um, and most of your resumes and applications are going to fall in the trash can. Um, based on their perception of whether or not you fit. But if you're passionate about working for a particular company, you need to detailedly look at the job description, the job posting. What do they want? Can you meet that between 70 and 90%? Okay, most people, um, uh, I know some people are very fearful about applying for a job that they don't meet 100%. You're not going to meet any job 100%, right? I'm more of a risk taker, right? I'll, if I feel like I can meet at 60% and I want to grow that extra 30% um, into that job, then I'm going to take a shot at it. Um, but 70 to 90 percent is a, is a safe bet, right? That's passing in any class. So if you can get 70 percent, 70, 80 percent of what they're looking for in that position, apply for it. And then as you're writing your cover letter, address it to at least the person who is on the job posting unless you can find someone higher up like their boss or unless you can you can find a way to meet and contact the decision maker who are you actually going to be working for who needs your what you can offer how can you get in front of them and talk to them and tell your story face to face to them that's what you're looking for, right? So they do have gatekeepers in the process, and they do have um, ways, and that piece of paper called the resume or the, and the application are made to chunk out as many people, as many callers as possible to kind of sift through and find out who actually fits, right? Remember, you don't want just a job. You want to do work. You don't want a, just a paid uh, holding pattern. You want to do meaningful work. You want to make a difference. You want to help a company in their trajectory of growing, of expanding, 
of meeting needs, of providing services, of being creative. And through that process, you want to grow into and develop those gifts and skills and abilities that God has given you. So figure out how that y'all can tell each other the story, listen to what they want, tell the story of what you can do, and find that win-win situation between you and the company that you want to work for. Okay? Okay. Strategically connect with others. I showed you how LinkedIn has a networking function. Think of LinkedIn as a Rolodex, right? But you may have other networks. If you're just starting out, use everyone that you know. Use your old high school teachers. Send them a copy of your resume. Use people that you've worked for in the past. Send them a copy of your resume and ask them, if you know someone who, can, who needs this, would you mind sharing that with them? So ask the people that in your sphere of influence, do you mind taking my resume and sharing it with someone who you think might be looking for the skills that I possess? Remember, each one of us has influence. Each one of us has um, people who like us, who respect us, who know what we're, we're capable of, and they may be willing to help you make that next connection. Find out your value. I didn't bring that up. Let me bring that up really quick while I'm thinking about it. Find out your value. And this is, uh, to me, extremely important. Um, the way I do it is I do use Glassdoor. Now, I've used Glassdoor to the point where they don't like to give me information, right, without me subscribing to all the information. All right, so I want to look at um, Google... Linguist um, language processing glass door. So there is a position called a Google Analytical Linguist job at Mountain View, California. Minimum qualification is two years experience. Um, this one doesn't actually show it. Sometimes, there it is. Ha ha ha. Now, if I clicked on link, uh, if I clicked on that glass door, it would probably shut me out as soon as I got there. There are other people looking for computational linguists, morphosyntactic natural language processing. That's what I'm interested in using and building. You can even travel the world, right? There's some there's 128 open jobs in Berlin. If you have a desire to travel, don't limit where you apply, right? See the world. Get a job in London. Get a job in Singapore. Get a job in Dubai, right? the page. That's all right. We found the information we want. 
Um, so we're able to kind of home in on that and say, okay, so this is what I'm worth, right? That's going to be a median. You might start have to start a little lower, but okay. So offer me 105. I would probably be happy with 105,000 to start out with, right? I know Silicon Valley is an expensive place to live, but I can live in a studio apartment for a little while until I get myself established and, you know, b build some credit, build some credibility, um, do a few things, and then um, move into a nicer place when I get you know, up when I get established. And then the last thing is stay active, right? Be an active participant in the community. Post on your social media, but post appropriately, right? You should be, if you are interested in a particular field, you should follow people who are in that field. You should post articles in that field. You should be part of the discussion of that field. All right. Um, I have a Twitter account, and it is exclusively linguistics and translation. I could I could start another chat. I don't post anything. Um, now I'm not saying I completely boycott anything that's Christian, but I don't over overtly present that I am a missionary or preacher because, because of the bad examples of some other missionaries and preachers over the years have left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouth, um, unfortunately. Now, I, I do, maybe once or twice a year, post something, and a couple of people that I follow are Christians, and they'll post, you know, on rare occasions. So in a professional sense, I'll do work for um, religious organizations, and my religious translation doesn't take away from my ability. But that's not the main thrust of my business work, right? I want to be a good linguist, no matter what my, you know, who I translate for, right? If it's medical or if it's um, oil and gas, like I, I started getting into in Houston, right? Or it's law or pre-law, you know, or marketing, you know, or AI. Whatever the ta topic be true to that topic and develop it and learn it and expand that field. Put your talents to use there, not to be ashamed of the gospel, right? Or not to be ashamed of who you are as a Christian. But unfortunately, a lot of people use the Christian on their business card to get business. That's what they use it for, right? They think, um, you know, that's what... Anyway, uh, many people tout religion for the purpose of getting an advantage over other people. They use it to manipulate people, in other words. And that's it has gotten a bad rap. So let's be careful of that. Not to be ashamed of the gospel itself, but of how it's being used in... Uh, in business contexts. Um, talk about your education, talk about your experience. Customize your resume, remember? Review, understanding who your audience is and um, speaking to them in their language. Once you get that, for the, the resume is simply a piece of paper that gets you a pass in to see look people in the eye, right? The goal is to get in front of people as often as possible 
to be able to sit down face to face and to tell your story. And that's where interviewing comes in. How are you going to tell your story? How are you going to get a chance to tell your story? This is where your list of interview questions are going to be important. Your research on the company that you want to to do business with is going to be important. Learn their language. Write your story in their language. Rehearse your story in their language. Right? Learn to speak like they do. One of the first, one of the most open-ended questions that people will ask if they don't know anything else to ask. And that so many people don't know how to answer is, tell me something about yourself. I was coaching my wife uh, recently, and maybe she was applying for a new job. And when somebody asks you that question, they don't want you to tell them about your favorite dog, even though that's that's important. Um, I think, who was it? Tom Hanks said that he always broke the ice with people by asking them about their pet. That was just a, a way of, no, it wasn't. It was Seth Meyers, sorry, Seth Meyers. In the article, in the interview that I showed you, ask them about their pet, break the ice, make the connection, but then find a way to tell the story. Anticipate the questions, script your answers, rehearse. That's what we're going to do in this class, right? We're going to have a chance for you to get um, two on two on two and to role play going through an interview process. People aren't trying to eliminate you. They're trying to find the person who's going to fit, the person who they can connect with and they can feel comfortable trusting their project, their business, their paycheck to, right? If you don't work out, then they're going to keep looking until they find someone who does work out. I've gotten jobs before several times that were over, way over my head, but people felt like they could trust me with their paycheck, with their bottom line. They felt like I would come in and actually make them money, right? That's the bottom line of business. Are you going to be able to help this company in their, in their attempt to make money and provide a service? If they don't have that confidence that you're going to actually be able to do that, they're not going to hire you. If you can show them that not only are, are hiring you, they're going to make, they're going to meet their obligations. But hiring you, you're going you're gonna to bump them up to the next level. You're going to help them on their next big creative push. Right? You're going to help them over the hump. And so that's important to be able to present that picture. Good first impressions. You know, I, I was looking at a couple of videos. Um, people have tried to say, you know, how long does it take to make a first good impression? Right? Five seconds, and they cut it down to three seconds. One second, half a second, a quarter, a third of a second. Um... Think about that ahead of time, plan for that ahead of time, prepare for that ahead of time. But when it comes to that, you can't let that kind of pressure invade the moment of truth, right? The moment of, you have to meet the person as a person, not as an impression, not as a meat grinder. 
And that's where those listening gifts, listening skills come in. All right. Now, you've had the interview. You've talked about things. You have, and then they, and then they have moved on, and they've interviewed 10 other people. How are you going to keep that memory in their minds? Remember, um, for those of you that have been in in a debate or in forensics tournaments, right? It was the lat. You have six people in a row performing their piece in a round. The last person, the sixth person, is the most, is the one that they remember the most, right? And they tend to get bumped, get get um, scored a little bit higher than everyone else because they're the freshest on the mind. How are you going to keep your that freshness in your uh, friend's mind? And that's where follow-up comes in. Follow-up. Write a thank you note. Thank the interviewer verbally as you leave. Write a handwritten thank you card. And drop it in the mail immediately, within two days. Right? Otherwise, it's pointless after that. Send them an email um, after three or four days. And then send in any information that they ask for in a timely manner. Right? Turn it around, 24, 48 hours. Get it, get it back to them. Then, the last bit is when you get a job offer, do you accept right away? In an ideal world, you might get three job offers at the same time. Sometimes that happens. You won't have any job offers for six months, and then all of a sudden you get three. Now how do you make a decision? Right? Well, again negotiate. You're looking for a win-win situation. They want someone who can accomplish X, Y, Z to make the company money, right? They have this lack. They have, they have to have this, this gap filled in order for the company to be successful. You have to be able to see their company, do the research to be able to see their company from their perspective. See the big picture. How does what you do fit in with what everything else is? And how does your contribution make the company money? All right? Based on that, now you've got the tools to be able to negotiate. If you can verbalize to them your understanding of what they need. Then you understand, right, what you are worth to the company. Now you can say, all right, I will do this, this, this for me, for you, right? I'll be making the company or I will be helping the company in a team setting. I will be helping the company reach this kind of financial goal. Right? So therefore, my compensation should be this. Don't be afraid to ask what you're worth. Ladies, don't be afraid to ask what you're worth. They may not give you everything you ask for. My brother said that he, um, that somebody told him to ask for three things. Ask for something, an easy thing. So, ask for the money you want, right? Don't overshoot it. Don't undersell yourself, right? Shoot for a median amount, right? Look, do the research. Look at Glassdoor. Find out what people in the field are making. Shoot for a median um, within your experience and expertise in everything. And then ask for perks, right? 
asked for three perks, one easy one, one middle, and one hard. They're going to say no to the they're going to say no to one, but they're going to feel, by saying no to one, they're going to feel obligated to perhaps say yes to the others. And then that way you get some things that you want out of the perks. I know I'm talking a lot in theoretical theoretics here. All right, so let's just uh, step back for a minute and think through a real-life scenario. I'm going to bring back up the LinkedIn because I've, it's, um, I've gotten work through LinkedIn, and I think um, it's possible to get work through LinkedIn. All right? So LinkedIn gives you the potential to research and save jobs. Okay, I'm wanting to do, wanting to look for a linguistics job. Linguist. Um, I'm not going to use the region. I don't care where it is. Could be anywhere, right? The world is my oyster. All right. Here we have several possibilities: computational linguist, British English linguist. That's not that's not going to fit me. Work for Grammarly <laughs> website. Linguist in multiple languages, a data linguist for Amazon, IntelliSwift software linguist. They're actively recruiting. Okay, three months ago, that's all right. So let's use some criteria to put this down they the ones who have been have an opening that they asked for me right there we go that's going to narrow us down a bit spanish translator okay that's on my resume i can do that Pink Breast Center, so it's going to be medical. I've done medical before. Freelance, and they say 56 to 76K. Some posts will go ahead and give you that right there. Oh, back to my other one. Um, the Spanish translator, Patterson, New Jersey. Easy apply. What is easy apply? Easy apply means that they will literally, you don't hardly have to do anything. You can, it'll simply take your LinkedIn profile and send it as your resume. Now, usually the company gets more, more applications that way. They're going to set their um, search engine to to highlight the keywords that they're looking for and they're, so they're going to throw out most of the positions that actually do apply but if if your if your um, resume meets their criteria what is your primary function Translate written and oral Reddit records, medical results, and any patients for our office in Patterson that serves a very large Spanish community. Fluency in English and Spanish, one year experience as a Spanish English translator, entry level full time, hospital and healthcare.
It already has 150 applicants. I don't want entry level anyway, right? Some of you do. That's not a problem. This is a hospital or healthcare, so it's, it has 11 to 50 employees, so it's probably a small clinic. And they do the, the screenings. Um, but with 150 applicants, um, I don't know that I would stand out, especially I don't know that I want to live in Patterson, New Jersey. So let's keep looking. I don't want to work freelance either because freelance means I pay for everything. I pay for my own insurance. Um, if I'm only making fifty-five thousand, I could stay here, make thirty-five thousand plus benefits, and come out ahead actually. Than working for myself and paying twenty-five percent um, self-employment tax. This is translator part-time. No, thank you. Not interested in part-time. Project manager. Now, that looks a little interesting. Supertext USA. They've only had 15 applicants, and it was only posted five days ago. So my profile matches this job. Okay. Let's take a look at this. Supertext in a nutshell is an online copywriting and translation agency that hails from Switzerland to a, a full-service LSP with branches in Los Angeles, Zurich, etc. Our name says it all. Copywriting, translating, localizing, editing, proofreading services. More than 100 languages. You've been in the language industry for around five years. You have a passion for languages and writing. You're super organized, a great multitasker, but always focused. You have experience building client relations and are not afraid to pick up the phone. You understand creative language projects and enjoy coordinating linguistic teams. Communication and teamwork come naturally to you, and you're looking to grow with our startup and give it your all to make things happen. Isn't Does a startup sound like a good, fun fit for you? There's no guarantees. You may, y'all may make it big, and you may be a CEO for five years, making six figures, or you may get, go bust in three months, and you're out of a job looking for one again. Are you willing to take that risk? What can you learn there? Be the first point of contact for clients and build valuable business relationships. Leverage SuperTech's unique online system. Work with an international team of developers and language specialists in Europe. I mean, I want to do that. <laughs> that sounds fun. So that's the kind of research. The kind of thinking, you know, look at the um, kinds of filters that you can use in your research, right? Narrow down what exactly you're looking for. I think someone was interested in looking at um, Amazon Jobs. You want uh, opportunities for students. There you go. Any open jobs? 
you want to work for a fulfillment center, basically doing logistics? Or do you want to work for the corporation? Just, in other words, you work from your couch. Well, hopefully you've got a professional environment in which you can work. But you can still work at home and be connected to your family if that's something that you're interested in. I'm not going to uh, spend any more of your time. Um, let's be sure the next time you come to class to bring your laptops, all right, so that you can be ready to do some research together. We'll, we'll have some more exercises online uh, to do over the next couple of weeks. Later on this week, we're going to be talking about diversity in the workplace. And that will be important to understand. I think a lot of y'all already have a pretty good clue about that. But that will be um, coming So with that, I'm going to sign off and post this video and give you all a little bit more pointers and a, a short recap on what the assignment is going to be.